Time to get back inside the huddle, presented by Twin Cities Orthopedics. Today, chatting with Osseo Girls soccer head coach Tracy Olenkamp. The Orioles finished their regular season last Thursday. We caught up with her as her team heads towards section tournament action starting on Tuesday night. We'll get into that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the scoreboard. On the gridiron, Maple Grove picked up a huge win Friday night over Lakeville North 14-6. Evan Hull ran for 130 yards in the Crimson win. Next up, homecoming week. And yep, Darren Lamker and his Edina Hornets come to Crimson Stadium Friday night, 7 o'clock. It will be a slobber knocker, no doubt. Osseo lost to Titino Grace on Friday, 28-13. Orioles could not slow down the Eagles' running attack. The Orioles host Anoka on Friday night at 7 o'clock. In volleyball, Maple Grove up their record of 14-1 and after wins over Titino Grace and Irondale. Crimson round out their season this week and uh, their final week of the regular season. They face Anoka and Armstrong to close out the regular season. Osseo has won six straight games with victories over Totino Grace and Spring Lake Park last week. Number three ranked Champlain Park and Irondale await the Orioles this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, as they close out their regular season. In soccer, the regular season wrapped up last week and now teams will head toward the postseason. Maple Grove girls picked up the top seed in Section 5. They'll have home field advantage throughout the tournament. They open up play on Tuesday night against the Park Center. Semifinal action takes place Thursday. Championship is a week from Tuesday, which would be October 17th. Osseo also in Section 5, seeded 7th. They'll travel to Centennial to take on the number 2 seeded Cougars on Tuesday night. Speaking of the Orioles, yep, we caught up with head coach Tracy Olenkamp from a wins and losses perspective. Osseo might have had a down season, but hear what she has to say. That's next, after our, this from our presenting sponsor, Twin Cities Orthopedic. This is Inside the Huddle on Maple Grove Voice. It takes a lot to bring down a Minnesota Vikings player, but when an injury occurs, a Twin Cities Orthopedics physician is on the field and ready to assess the situation. TCO is the official sports medicine provider of the Minnesota Vikings and proud to be a part of the new home of the Minnesota Vikings in Egan. Best yet, the community can see the same great doctors at one of our 40 clinic locations across the metro. Visit TCOMN.com to learn more. TCOMN.com. Talking Osseo girls soccer with head coach Tracy Olenkamp and final game of the regular season, senior night. I know there's a lot of emotion that goes into that once the final horn sounds. Is it is it hard as a coach to kind of watch these kids come through the program and then get them to the end? And I mean, there's got to be some emotion there for you too. Yeah, for sure, especially this specific senior group. Um, this is my fourth year as head coach, so a lot of these girls started varsity their first year as ninth graders and were varsity starters as ninth graders. So now that they're seniors and still varsity starters and they've been with me the whole time, it makes it additionally emotional as compared to you know my last couple of years as head coach. When you kind of have a chance to sit back and take a snapshot of the season, um, what do you know about your team now that you maybe didn't know in August when the whole thing started? Um, well, I think <laughs> we kind of joke about this, but I, I think we've learned that as a group we can be um, – the most inconsistent group of soccer players and personalities on the field. Uh, we play a half of soccer where we look discombobulated and we, you know, get snippy with each other. And then at halftime, we decide to rally and we come back and we play some of the cleanest, best organized soccer that I've seen. And they lift each other up. Um, so I think we've we've really had that kind of Jekyll and Hyde experience this year, where it's gone both ways in the course of one game. I know you talked about your your seniors and you know the the fact that you've had them for all four years, a lot of them for the four years you've been here. You've you've also got a lot of young kids that are kind of just cutting their teeth and trying to figure things out. What what kind of strides have they made over the course of the two and a half months we've been rolling? Yeah, well, um, because I have so many seniors who've been kind of own, um, owning their field position for several years as starters, a lot of my younger players have been kind of forced out of positions that they naturally would have played. Um, I think about like Lariah Boone, who is a varsity returner, but um, you know she played sweeper tonight for us for the, almost the entirety of the second half, and right. she is not a defender. Um, but because we need some of those younger kids to step in and fill those roles, um, that's I think one of the the biggest things that I look forward to is seeing the um, the ability of those kids to shift into whatever role we ask them to fill has been pretty exciting. 
And they and they really have done it without question. I mean, they've just kind of, they just work. Your team works hard. Absolutely. Um, the one thing I can say about our girls is they they are here for the program. They are all about the orange and black. It's never about you know me as an individual player. It is about you know what can I do for Osseo girls soccer, and that's something we've worked really hard to foster over the last four years, um, and probably one of the things that I'm the most proud of. What's one thing as a head coach that you know now that you wish four years ago you had known? <laughs> if there's just one. <laughs> um. Geez, there are, I, I think there are a lot of things. Um, I think just to, that in those, in those losses, we need to continue to just find small moments of celebration and success, especially in a season like this that just hasn't gone the way that we've wanted it to. I mean, I think those first years I took those losses a little more personally and kind of missed out on some of those bright spots. Um, I think about our Champlain game this year where the second half absolutely went upside down for us um, but our bright spot of the game was when you know Gretchen Nistler has this beautiful free kick in the box and Lila finishes and there were three captains involved in that in that goal and it was just an awesome moment and as a coach now I can learn to celebrate that bright spot even though the game did not go the way that we wanted it to. Your keeper tonight played exceptional I, I thought you know I mean it could have just as easily been you know seven or eight mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it was three I kind of talk about her progression too. Sure um, and actually I will say that is a position that I feel super strong in. Erica, um, who played in goal for us tonight, is just a junior, so she has another year left in our program. Anna Corona, who was on the bench for us tonight, is just a freshman and is equally as talented in the net. Um, I know that other schools in our conference who are I know that our conference champion school in our in our conference is jealous of our goalkeeping ability in this program. Um, so Erica's come a long way. Um, she's working on her ability to lead the team vocally. At, that's challenging as a goalkeeper to be a positive leader, especially when the game is not going the way we want it to. Um, and Anna's working on confidence uh, with her feet and coming out and you know making those big saves. So we are we are blessed with both of our goalkeepers for sure. It's you flip the script now and it's postseason, yeah. so you, you you're not done. So you play one final one at home tonight, but then you got to go on the road starting next week. The season just flies by. Yeah. I mean, it's like you kind of go through. You you make the road trip up north and you're down south and you kind of do your thing. You get do the team bonding thing. Then all of a sudden we blink and here we are. You know, the last regular season game. I, what's what's kind of the message now is as you move towards postseason? Because obviously there's the cliche of you know we don't have anything to lose and backs against so the whole that whole thing. Is it just kind of just, let's just go out and play our game and just play loose? Yeah, you know, I, I think our message is just let's play a game where we play 80 minutes of soccer. I mean, I think even tonight we had a slow start and we all agreed at halftime that was not the 40 minutes that we wanted to come out with tonight. So our, our message consistently has been we need to put together 80 solid minutes. We did that once this year against Titino Grace and had a great result against them. Um, you know, last year they killed us in regular season play and this year we were winning one to nothing at halftime eventually lost two to one we played 80 minutes of soccer that night um we need to do that again so my message is let's play 80 minutes of soccer that we can be proud of let's not come out slow let's not finish broken hearted let's right. let's just do 80 minutes of what we do best so final one for me and you talked about um you you just talked about you know what your something we can be proud of when you look back what is the thing you are most proud of of this group and the second part to the question is in your four years now as you've continued to build, continue to build this program what are you most proud about from that perspective um gosh you know i'm proud of them as soccer players i think i've got really talented players uh, several of these seniors especially can go on to play some college ball if they want to and should um and, and I hope that they play with me someday in Minnesota Women's Soccer League. Um, but what I'm really most proud of is that I, on this team, I look at my entire roster of 21 kids at the moment, and there is not one kid that I would not hesitate to want to call my own daughter. Like they just, they are good kids, they are good students, they work hard in school, they work hard on the field out here. We have practices that are fun and upbeat and when somebody's having a bad day, they immediately pick each other up. I see them in the hallways, they all dress alike on game days, they, you know, they have field buddies that they buy little presents for and leave little post-it notes for. Um, they're just good kids and, and I, that's something that you can't coach. I think, I think I'm really lucky in that way. Thanks to head coach Tracy Olenkamp of the Osseo girls soccer team and thanks to our presenting sponsor Twin Cities Orthopedics. We'll catch you next time inside the huddle right here on Maple Grove Voice.